There's something that has caught my attention. Look at Lego. We had this crazy downpour. Look at all this water. It's like a big dam right here, huh? Look at this, guys. Huge dam. Hey, guys. We're going to drain this out for you. Good old Lego. She's really become something of a uh, cool mascot. Look at ladies. You're a big dude. But you're going to like where I bring you because you get fed all the time and there's gals and man, you're going to just love it. This is the moment of truth, by the way, people. And this is about battle, just so you guys know. What's going on everyone? Kenan here on a rainy day. Uh, yeah, sky's falling, raining cats and dogs, although it stopped at the moment, which is nice. Uh, we got a pretty good saturation out here, but the camp's looking good. Everyone's handling it well. Uh, today what needs to happen is uh, we're gonna pull Lumpy out of his kind of convalescent area, the place where he's kind of resting up because he's been doing much better. Uh, still favors that right front leg a little bit. But what I want to do is I want to move him out of this area that you see and kind of bring him over to a more exciting and enriching and overall, oh, Jesus, that was, that was quite something, overall more conducive for a tortoise of his needs, okay? He is a grassland species and uh, we got to get him on some grass, don't you think? We sincerely thank all of you happy campers out there. Your support makes a real difference in our efforts here at Camp Kennet. This week's special shout out goes to Patreon member Irie Rowe. Thank you for all you do and for loving reptiles. There he is. Hey buddy, we're gonna get you out of here, pal. I'm gonna put you out back. You can see that he's still a little bit swollen there, but the good news is, is that he's been uh, pooping and moving around and acting more like his old self. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm gonna be able to put him back in with the group any longer. Um, I just don't wanna risk him fighting with the other tortoises during breeding season. And that's something that I wanna make sure, um, you know, doesn't happen. So unfortunately, Lumpy is gonna be a little bit more solitary um, these days. Although I am considering taking the leprechauns uh, and moving them out back as well. I don't think he'll try and breed them. I'll keep an eye on him. I don't think he'll be aggressive. So that's cool. So we're gonna take Lumpy and we're gonna load him up into this cart and then we're gonna bring him out back. But that's not all we're doing today, people. We're also gonna take Hercules. Hercules oh, is gonna come and move over Look at this little lizard. Look at that little guy. Hey, little dude. I'm sorry to disturb you, but we're going to move this thing like so. This is a waterlogged piece of lumber, and I am slipping. Okay, here we go. Just going to move it like so, and we're going to roll on in. Look at this bamboo is weeping because I think it's getting a little too much water currently. All right, let's go. Right down. No issues. And then we get the lumpster. Lumple Stiltskin. Sir Lumps a lot. I don't know. I make up all these wacky names for him, but uh, it's lumpy. Ugh. Hear that? A little thunder. Okay, so we're going to grab lumpy right now. I'm going to go ahead and just set you guys up on the ground so you can just kind of hang out there, watch how I do it. Uh, these carts prove invaluable when dealing with sulcatas and other larger tortoises. Let's hope we can get this done before the rain comes and uh, really dampens this whole thing. Ah! There we go, Lumpy. Oh, good man. He's fighting and everything. There you go. You just lift him right up and into the bin. You guys who watch the channel a long time, I know you guys have seen this before. But oh, I just uh, love kind of showing you what I have to do during the day. And uh, that's what I have to do. I gotta move tortoises today. So like I said, we're gonna move Herx next. And Hercules is gonna go in with the gals and Brutus. And we're gonna kind of see how they do together. There's most likely gonna be some battling, but for us right now, this is gonna be cool for Lumpy. Just to see him relaxing and out in a large pasture. In fact, the original pasture that he lived in for more than 12 years before I moved that whole group on the other side. Now, when you move tortoises, 
Uh, sometimes you can upset their egg laying and I certainly have done that. They've been in there for about a year. I'm hoping maybe this year they'll start laying eggs again. But what happens is you can move a tortoise like I did just across the yard and it just screws everything up as far as egg laying and egg production and all that good stuff. I wasn't really that worried. Um, Sulcatas are well represented. It's not as though, um, you know, there's any shortage of these little guys. Ugh. And I'm becoming less and less uh, involved in kind of producing sulcatas. I wouldn't mind producing just a few, but certainly not trying to produce them in any large numbers any longer. All right, so let's put Lumpy down here. And what is, we're gonna use Lumpy as bait. Go ahead, slide out, buddy. Whoop, right out. Because you can see Hercules is in there. So if we let Lumpy out, I think the Herx is gonna come out to see what's going on. And I'm of course gonna grab Hercules before he can kind of start wrestling with Lumpy. But there's something that has caught my attention over here. Look at Lego. Look what happened. We had this crazy downpour. Look at all this water. It's like a big dam right here, huh? So let's see if I can get this water out. Look at this guys, huge dam. So what I like to do is simply, I'll just dig a hole right there. Okay. And then we're gonna come over here and just, I fan it. I don't have my shovel, but I think we'll make it. It's just a bunch of um, cypress mulch that is kind of plugged up the bottom here. I could put maybe some PVC, but that would just get clogged up as well. And this doesn't happen often enough to where I'll have any real danger. These guys, as you can see, are pretty all terrain. They can go amphibious if they need. Here we go. Almost there. Just get a bigger hole going. I got a big old rock. There's a big old rock in there. Hey guys, we're gonna drain this out for you. There we go. Let's drain the swamp, as they say. Ugh. Nice big rock there. All right, and we're, we're going. We got some water flow happening. That's what I like to say. All right, very good. Oh, whew. All right, so that'll drain out and we'll get back to the project. Look at this, how cool is this? Lumps is basically like, I love grass. So Lumpy is straight up enjoying himself already. So that's good news. I love seeing him do that. And just having him able to walk around is gonna help out with that leg. Uh, it's gonna also help out his digestion. And uh, as you can see, I don't think he's got any issues being on this large area of grass. Uh, very good news. So love, I love Lumpy. Um, I've mentioned it before, Lumpy came to me from my friends up in Centum Riches, New York, that I've known since I was, gosh, just a young guy. Uh, and um, my friend Mike Crutali gave him to me, and I've he's been in my care since 2004. And he was way smaller at that point. Um, okay, let's see if we can get the Hercules out. All right, Lump, sorry to scare you, buddy. Look at Hercules! Hercules! You guys ever watch the clumps? Isn't that what it was? The Nutty Professor? Let me just drain this a little bit. Okay there, Lumpy. I mean, Hercules, you're a big dude. But you're gonna like where I bring you because you get fed all the time and there's gals and man, you're gonna just love it. But you're a big dude, dude. As you can see, I've been squirreling away some, some uh, materials for the crocodile fence. We need fence. So uh, anybody living in the Palm Beach area have any uh, really good gauged uh, chain link, let me know. I would appreciate it. Okay, in the meantime, look at this massive boy right here, Hercules. I love you, dude. Just a big, handsome fella. We're going to get him going. I got to get you guys right there. Herx, do you mind coming out? Come on out and say hello to everybody. You a big boy yet? Oh, yeah, that's a problem. That's a big fella. There you go, go. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy smokes, guys. Sulcatas, man. They are no joke. These are big tortoises. Heavy and 
beautiful in my opinion. All right, here we are. Let's see. Will I be lucky? Oh, I'm lucky. I'm lucky. All right. Whew. How's that? I may have done this one of 400 times before. Okay. Now we got the Hercules. He's in there and we're going for a little ride. Uh, Lumps, do me a favor. Uh, continue to do what you do. Sorry, it's scary again, buddy. Just do your thing. I'm going to shut this gate. We are now going to be spending the rest of the video watching what happens when you introduce sulcatas. I just want to double check this again. Make sure it didn't get clogged up. I'm sure we're going to get more rain here today. I got my rain boots on. This is filling up again. This is draining nicely. Kill. Very, very nice. Okay, so mission accomplished. I love seeing the redfoots. It's really cool having redfoots here in Florida because these are a species that tolerate the wet conditions from time to time. Uh, they live in areas where it does rain. Excuse me, had a burp. It does rain. Uh, and I love this new enclosure because we get to see them a lot more. And look at this. So it's rained so much. The reservoir of the recreation pond, the aquascape pond, is filled up. So that's what happens. This water fills up and it overflows. It's supposed to overflow into the back pond, which is going to become the alligator pit, the alligator pond. But my goodness, that's a lot of rain in a short period of time. Happy to, oh, remember this gal? Look at this little gal. We got her from Bush Wildlife. She's got no issues, man. She's just doing so well out here with the crew. And then I know you guys love updates on good old Lego. Here she is. Come here, Lego. Oh, she's really become something of a uh, cool mascot. She just does her thing. She moves around fine. We got her on a proper diet. She looks nice and healthy. Um, and there you go. I mean, look at that little goofy little tail she's got and the crazy shell. All right, there you go, Lego. And everyone treats Lego very well here. Young juvenile right there. Okay, this is so cool, man. I love it out here. Even if it is raining, man, there's always some fun stuff going on in the backyard, you know? Look at this, all right, isn't that great? I love it. So he'll spend his days walking around grazing. I'll supplement his diet, but maybe we can get this arm back. I don't know. So we'll just keep a, uh, keep a good look on him. He seems to be using it a little bit more, and I just love to see him uh, chowing down like that. Okay, let's go. We got more to do. We are now heading to see the rest of the crew, the sulcatas. It's better to have a nice, healthy sulcata male in there. Uh, having Lumpy not in there makes me think that the females were not happy with Brutus or that Brutus was just not really interested in breeding. I don't think he really breeds much. It's mostly lumpy, uh, but having two males when you have tortoises is helpful to induce uh, breeding and also the testosterone levels rise when these animals have to combat. And so when that rises, they have more fertile sperm and you get more fertile eggs. All right, I'm almost there. Good stuff. Ah, oh, look at that. Shout out to Tacoma Beast and CBI. I love that truck. Yeah. Okay, here we go. And here's Lumpy right now. Now, the reason I moved these guys originally was because this, oh, look, there's a basilisk, guys. I don't know if you can see it. It ran just across the fence line. That's a basilisk right there on the fence, brown basilisk. Let me see if I can show up. Oh, he just disappeared. Oh, well. now the reason I moved them back when I did was because this area does not stay wet very long. You know, we got some rain right now, but here are the sulcatas. They're kind of up and away from that rain. Uh, their house doesn't get rained on and this will all drain. This water will flow into the main pond. So here in Florida, you know, this is a consideration you have to address when dealing with um, sulcata tortoises. Very important to keep these guys 
from just living in sopping wet conditions for days at a time. All right, so we have another situation like we did with the other, the other doorway or gate, if you will. That's how I kind of do things here. I just try and make it easy. All right. Whew. Got a little wet. Let's get Herx out here. And the reason I'm doing this now is because I'm home. I'm gonna be able to separate the tortoises if I have to. And there are things you can do to dissuade them from actually fighting. All right, Herc, here we go. One, two, three. Boop. Right down. Look at this. Hercules. Meet Dana. I just pulled that name out of my neck, uh, out of my head. There he is. Uh, all right. Now we're going to watch him because this is going to be the adventure. She's already interested in him. Uh, hopefully he will not be aggressive towards the females. He's going to most likely deal with Brutus, who's over there, who's actually a pretty good sized tortoise. Uh, we're also going to probably rake in here. But first, I just kind of want to have a look and see what's going on with this guy and see how he does. Uh, so this is how introductions go as far as putting a new tortoise in a colony. And again, another thing you guys need to realize is um, whenever you add a tortoise, male or female, it could also upset things. So that might even set us back another year as well for egg production. Um, I gotta be honest, I don't really care. <laughs> I'm not really worried about that. I just want these animals to have a good life. And in a few years, if we start getting baby sulcatas again, uh, that's fine. Um, but the reality is that this group uh, of animals I've had together up until last year when I started moving things and that's when uh, Lumpy got sick. Maybe the move upset him. I don't know. I think it was more of an underlying dehydration issue. But um, once uh, you have a stable colony and they produce year after year, I mean, that's really a good thing. You don't want to mess with that too much. But, you know, if a female dies or a male dies and you got to replace them, uh, it will upset the balance. But check this out. Look at Hercules seeing this female. Oh, look, she's, she, what's she doing? She's actually getting a little aggro. From time to time, you'll see females sometimes uh, act like males and get a little uh, territorial. So, very good stuff. And we are coming into September. We are in September. Uh, and that is a time when the tortoises start their combat. They actually begin combat because breeding will take place September, October, all the way through till about January with egg laying. Uh, in the past, I've gotten eggs from certain tortoises in October, all the way through to April. Sulcata tortoises are really, really prolific breeders or prolific egg layers. Uh, for example, this female here would always lay about 21 eggs and she would clutch about three times a year. My big gal, who is probably in here she might come out for a visit she's about 130 pounds uh she would lay no joke 50 to 60 eggs and she would produce eggs five times a season so that's just very prolific and as we know with reptiles uh this is the moment of truth by the way people there is my other male there's brutus Here's Hercules. We're going to have to just deal with this. And they know each other. They know what's a male and what's not. So I want to keep an eye on this, but I'm, I'm guessing Hercules will turn out to be pretty alpha. Um, and again, guys, I'm on hand. This is something that has to happen. We have to let this kind of battle happen. I'm here to separate him, but make no mistake. If you weren't here, he if he got backed up against a wall, uh, those Guler projections that are underneath their necks on the plastrons that poke out of the front of the plastron, those are formidable weapons. Now, luckily, Hercules doesn't have very large ones, but look at this. He's sniffing. He's definitely getting uh, chemical cues, scent, and he's going to see if it's scent of a woman or scent of a boy, and he's going to figure that out pretty darn quick. Uh, so anyway, those Guler projections could really cause damage. And I don't know if you guys remember, I put a big giant shell in the Burmese python habitat. That would be uh, buttercup's habitat. 
And that big sulcata shell was from Zeus who died in 2008. A 230 pound sulcata tortoise. This is promising. There doesn't seem to be much combat at the moment, but that'll all change. Plus it's a rainy, cool day. But um, what's going on is uh, Zeus was actually killed by Lumpy. Lumpy got his ghoul projections right up there, up underneath the shoulder and separated the skin from the shell. And uh, when that happens, it can be catastrophic for them. We've seen that at a, my friend Bob Bloom's place, an injury like that. Uh, and we've also seen my friend Sam Pascucci, and this is about to be battle, just so you guys know. Um, this is definitely battle posturing, it's dominance. They're trying to figure each other out. Um, but you know, it is, it is what it is, it's gotta happen. Um, so my friend Sam Pascucci figured a way that he was able to drill through the shell and reattach the skin. Uh, and that was a good thing. But injuries aren't uncommon when these guys battle. Um, they can hurt each other's legs. They can kind of just do some damage. So it's always good to be on hand. Now, one of the things I can also do uh, is the aggressor. You can flip that turtle over without him actually seeing you. I can kind of take him and flip him over and he'll then eventually give up the fight, so to speak because he feels like he keeps getting beaten. So that's one way to do it. But with larger tortoises, guys, here's some information you need to know about. Learned this again from my friend Sam uh, from Florida Iguana and Tortoise Breeders. When you roll a tortoise over, make sure you roll them over the same way that you got them. So if I roll them this way, you wanna roll them back that way because if you don't, it's very possible you can cause a torsion in their intestines. And what a torsion is, is basically a colic or they twist up their guts and if their guts twist uh, they can't of course uh, you know right uh, go to the bathroom and so that's you know a colic or in horses or some kind of um, you know it's a digestive distress so you don't want to do that does that make sense guys did I uh, properly make sense I think I properly explained that um, but this is interesting. It's cool to see this kind of interaction uh, between the tortoises. There has not been another male in here in a few months. Are you going to ram me? It's possible, dude. He'll sometimes ram uh, humans, you know, when they get in the mood. And you got to be careful because they could hurt your shin bones uh, and could potentially break an, uh, an ankle, which would be horrible. But I always say if you can't get away from a tortoise, you may have bigger problems than the tortoise. Uh, but look at these shells. This is just the reason they're called sulcatas. Just this sculpture, this, this beautiful shell. And he's a really light looking male, uh, which is nice. Uh, just a real beauty. And that was great. That was a good first interaction, folks. Uh, no combat. Brutus kind of stood up to him. I mean, Brutus is a fair size, you can see. And Brutus also has this interesting divot uh, in his shell, and you can see a little superficial um, uh, fungus from where water will collect. So I kind of brush him off from time to time, but it never gets really bad. I don't worry about it uh, unless it became shell rot, which it has never become. One of the females didn't even care what was going on. So I'm happy, man. Lumpy, uh, nope, Lumpy is back out there probably eating, and here's Hercules doing his thing. So there you have it, everybody. A fun, necessary video that we had to do here at the camp because we got to keep things moving we got to keep animals happy and we got to keep up with them so uh moving lumpy into that area will give him an opportunity to move around a lot more eat a more natural diet have a lot of grass to graze on um, another thing you guys need to know about tortoises when they eat if their intestines are full of food their intestines are working when they are starving is when they don't have any food in their entire alimentary canal that's when a tortoise is starving. It takes about two weeks for food to go all the way through and get properly digested. Remember, they're eating things like grass and produce and you know leaves, and these are not nutrient-dense foods. So they make up for that by being able to keep that food in their intestines for an extremely long period of time. And that really pulls out all the nutrients and allows them to just extract it all and uh, why they're able to grow so big eating such, well, 
crappy food, to be perfectly honest. Uh, it's not for them, you know what I mean? Which is also why, guys, we have to watch what we feed them in captivity so you don't create an obese tortoise and you don't give them any other kind of health issues. So uh, less is more with tortoises. I like to keep them on a three day a week feeding schedule and then allow them to kind of walk through and eat some of the weeds and stuff. For example, we have some of this, um, it's a type of grape leaf, or I think they call it potato vine. I'm not 100% sure, but the old timers have so many different names for things. Actually, here, see this? It's always good to have a machete laying around because now I can go ahead and just easily pull this out. And we can bring it over and give them a little treat, which I know you guys like to see. God, that's some good vine. But you notice how this vine uh, doesn't really last long if it droops down and they keep this whole area cleared up. If I did not have tortoises in that area, man, let me tell you, these guys would totally be, uh, it would be overrun with weeds and such. So let's go ahead and just throw this right there. See if these guys are interested in it. I know the female looks like she is. There you go. And uh, here comes Brutus. He's gonna come get a little bit. Maybe if um, Hercules sees it, he'll come in uh, and chill out and eat. But I don't know. I think he's more interested in the new locale, the new place. Then he's gonna go check out his new uh, digs. And there you have it. Okay, look, we had a successful introduction. Guys, we're gonna be doing more videos, of course. I'll let you know what goes on. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook. I might post videos of the tortoise combat there. Um, you know, I just think uh, this is a lot of fun to share with you guys in case you have some of these larger tortoises and you wanna learn how to kind of care for them correctly. Uh, I love seeing these guys eat, I love it. Uh, especially when they're eating natural foods, right? That's what's super cool about living down here in Florida or in some of the southern states, you're able to really feed these animals a varied diet of natural weeds and grass and stuff. Pretty cool, man. Tortoises are awesome. I don't know if you know this. Pretty cool animals. All right, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you guys so much uh, for all the support. You've really been helping the channel uh, keep up a really cool pace, and I do appreciate that. If you're a new viewer, thank you so much. We appreciate you. If you're an old viewer, thank you even more for being here for so long. Here he is again. <laughs> what a guy. All right, everybody, I'm Kenan. I'm saying goodbye for Hercules and Brutus and Lumpy and all the gals here today uh, eating their grapevine, whatever it may be. And I will see you guys again on another show where hopefully you'll learn something about reptiles. See you guys. So long.